Hey, what's up guys? Thank you for coming back to our YouTube channel. And of course, today I'm going to share with you this personal cloud storage of Orico CD3510. Some of you might be wondering what's a personal cloud storage. Well, think of this one. If you have been using Google Drive, iCloud, Dropbox, OneDrive, those are cloud storage that you are currently using, but they are only limited to like 15 gigabyte space for Google Drive. Once you max that space, you need to pay a monthly fee so that you can add up more spaces. Now, instead of doing that, you can go ahead and buy a personal cloud storage like this Orico. You plug it to your network and then you can access it across your devices from your laptop to your computer to your phone. You can use it. And if you try to see this one, this is even four terabyte of space. No need to pay for a monthly subscription from Google or iCloud for a bigger space. For me, I still subscribe for Google Drive and iCloud. I reserve those space for some personal uses. Now, if I want to pile up more data, I use my personal cloud storage so that I'm not going to max out my Google Drive space in my iCloud space, right? So that's where this personal cloud storage come in. If you have more questions about personal cloud storage, you can drop a comment down below. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and unbox this Orico cloud storage so that we can see the features and what it can actually do. This is CD3510. It is a quad-core CPU, phone backup, we have also remote access, we have PC backup, we have a gigabit ethernet port, and of course we have a multi-person sharing, so we can share it with a family, right? And of course this is a four terabyte of space. Hmm. This is the device itself, all right? So let's open it, Oracle. This is made of plastic, and of course, this is where you place the hard drive. Uh, we have a SATA port here. This can support the 3.5 inch hard drive, 2.5, and of course, SSD that are basically SATA port, okay? These sides, um, I can feel it's like an aluminum or yeah, metal, right? We have the power button. We have the gigabit ethernet port. We have the power for uh, this device. We have a reset button here. And then of course, we have a USB-C port, okay? So at the back, it's as simple as that. It is made of plastic as well with a hole so that it's going to dissipate the heat. And one more thing, there's a gap between the cover here that you can see that goes around that also help in the cooling of this device. Inside the box, I have the hard drive that is sealed. It's basically Toshiba, okay? Four terabyte of space. It's a 3.5 inch hard drive. We can slide it here then of course we need to plug it like that so that it's going to plug into the SATA port here. Lock this one so that it's, it's not going to move. Some of the box that we have here is the power supply. Then we have an ethernet cable to connect it to our network. Type C if we wanna directly connect it to our PC. An instructional manual for how we are going to do it. So since we have already unboxed this one, I'll go ahead and plug it to my computer so that we can see. All right, it's magnetic, there, there are no nice screws, that's good. I'll place it here, I need to plug it first. Here, there you go, plugged. So once this is plugged to my network, I can access it with my phone. If you try to follow the manual, there's a QR code here, we can use our phone. So I'll just go ahead, I'll scan that. So this is their app, I'll just go a wee line, I'll get. Okay, open, quick and easy. So user agreement, confirm, confirm. William would like to add a VPN configuration, allow. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and log in with my um, Google. First option, if you want to scan the QR code, it's actually at the back of the cover of the device, okay? But for now, since it's already placed there, I'll just do the LAN search. There you go. Bind node. Let's try to see bind node. Confirm. So binded succeeded. Okay. Do we go back? Let's go home. So we can just go ahead and click. System volume is not created. So we need to format the hard drive there. So we have an option of basic mode. Select that one. We type confirm. Confirm. 20%, 60%, 80%. Are we 100 now? There you go, it's done. 
So formal process, so what else? Yeah, that's very good. I have MySpace, so I can add any here. Oh, I can upload my, oh, that's very good. Allow full access. So it's going to upload my photos from my photos here, right? So I'll just go ahead, um, for now, I'll just go ahead and select a few photos here. Photos. Photos, okay, I'll just go ahead, even videos, okay, and upload. So what happened? Is it uploaded? Oh, there you go. Wow, that's good. That's good. I have a backup of these of, of photos and videos in this file. And what's that notification there? Transmission. Oh, I have transmission here. So it's transmitting all of these ones. Okay, that's already done. It categorizes all the picture. I don't know if we have a video. No, there's no video on the upload. There's no audio as well. So there's a space usage less than 1%. Very cool. Very, very cool. I can upload more video and audio and I can access it. So I've been going around this app. Uh, inside the app, there are other things you can do here. So one thing I've seen here since I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to access this one on my uh, computer. So you go for more and then you will have Samba. Samba is like a, a network drive for computers. So um, you can see that there are details here. This is the IP address of that personal cloud storage if you're going to access it locally it's in the network. So you can use that IP address. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set a simple password here so that we can try and access that one. After setting that up, go to your keyboard and press Windows plus R. This run prompt will pop in the lower left corner of your screen. Then you can type in the IP address. 192.168.41. Uh, then you press we are accessing it via this one. So I'm just going to open this one. It's going to ask for the username and password and the username and password is basically in the app as well. So we can change this one, modify some login name. But that is basically, since it's already there, um, I'm going to type that 1001896. It's good to change this one, but for the sake of this video, I don't want to change it. So you can see I typed it in this computer there and of course i'm going to type the password that we have created so all right so there you go we were able to access every let's just go ahead and do this one medium large and these were the ones that i actually uploaded a while back so let's try to open one image okay okay so this came from my phone so as easy as that, I can access it right away in my computer. Okay, I'm going to share you one other thing here. So this folder so that we are not going to find it every time we need it. You go in right click, go for map drive. Now we are going to assign any letter that we want as long as there are no conflicts with other drive names. Then that's the address. That's our personal storage then reconnect on sign in that's okay for us we go for next then let's go to my pc this pc i mean then every time we go here our drive is added that's how many nearly four terabytes so if you open that it is basically the same with what we have earlier it's always there as long as it's connected to the network all right so it's easier to access well, one of the things that I really appreciate with this Oracle is the quick and easy step on how you really uh, set this one up and start using it, making it running and upload your photos. And that's what we like. You get a device, you set it up quick and easy and start using it. So anyways, if you have any questions, you drop a comment down below. And if you want to try to check this one out, I'll place also the link down below. Now, if you have learned something from this video, guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like this video, and share it with your friends. See you in my next video, guys.